continuing coverage tonight of drawbridge dangers. CBS 12 News has reported on a series of blunders involving drawbridges in our area ever since a woman fell to her death from a drawbridge in downtown West Palm Beach as it opened a few weeks ago. Yeah, it turns out there's been another mishap, but this time underneath the drawbridge, and it was caught on camera. CBS 12's Al Pefley joining us live near the drawbridge that connects Jupiter and the Jupiter Inlet. Jim, this small drawbridge over the intercoastal waterway is used by countless boaters in our area. Over the weekend, this drawbridge nearly had deadly consequences for the people in one boat. Cell phone video of what happened was posted on social media. Oh my God. This video shows the frightening situation some boaters found themselves in when a drawbridge operator at the Cato Bridge raised the bridge, partially crushing a boat underneath. I think that's pretty crazy. Like, I've never seen it personally, but like, I, honestly, if I was on the boat, I'd be really scared. People who like to catch some sun near the drawbridge say they've seen the video on social media and they are shocked. It's actually uh, very terrifying because I was like, oh, that's funny. And then, no, it's actually really terrifying and dangerous. It is scary that that it did crush the boat and they were in danger. It appears the boat stopped under that portion of the bridge to take cover during heavy rain. And instead of going under the bridge in the main channel, the boat passed under the bridge closer to the edge of the intercoastal waterway where there are signs that clearly say unauthorized personnel prohibited, danger moving machinery, and no trespassing violators will be prosecuted. We tried to speak to the bridge tender on duty there today. Can you tell us how something like this happened? I can. I wasn't here. I don't have any idea how it happened. We wanted to know, are there cameras under the bridge? Do tenders have a vantage point? When a boat is under the bridge, does the bridge tender look under there first to see if there's you'll a have, boat there? You'll have to talk about that with the road bridge division. Anyone specifically I should ask for? The road bridge division. The Cato Bridge, which connects Jupiter with Jupiter Island, was the subject of a mini documentary. 707, Cap, go ahead and bring that down to the bridge. When you get close enough, we'll have to start an opening. People nearby realize how lucky the folks on the boat were to escape with their lives. Luckily, they jumped off, but luckily, you know, they, they got off safely and didn't get crushed by the thing. And as you saw in the video, the bridge tender referred us to Palm Beach County Roads and Bridges. I called there. Someone who answered the phone said that office is closed on Mondays. I also called to Cuesta Police. They told me Jupiter Police are responsible for calls in and around this bridge. I called there. They said they had no, incident, no record of this particular incident. Life or death, that's what's on the line for confessed Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz. Jury selection for the sentencing phase of this trial began in Broward County Court today. Our Lexi Nault was there and tells us this could take months. Well, this trial has been a long time coming and it looks like we could be in for a very lengthy process. We're expected to see about 1,500 jurors come through here of that pool. Only 12 will be chosen and those 12 will ultimately decide whether Nicholas Cruz should live or die. It's been more than four years since Nicholas Cruz went on a shooting rampage at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, killing 17 people and injuring 17 others. Last year, Cruz surprised the court when he pleaded guilty to the massacre. I am very sorry for what I did and I have to live with it every day. Now it will be up to a Broward County jury to unanimously decide to sentence Cruz to death or he'll spend the rest of his life in prison without the possibility of parole. The only issue that will be before you if you are selected to serve on the jury is the appropriate sentence for each of the counts. Hundreds were screened in Broward County today, but legal experts say finding an impartial jury for this case could be tricky. It's going to take a very special person to be able to set aside their inherent biases, which we all have. In order to arrive at death, jurors must find that this was an atrocious and cruel crime, and they'll be asked to consider mitigating factors, such as Cruz's upbringing and mental state before they make that decision. Given the nature of the horrendous nature of this crime, 
Certainly, Nicholas Cruz's mental state is front and center. But in the months leading up to this long-awaited trial, many victims' families have held firm, saying they want to see the death penalty in this case. He deserves no mercy at all. He walked onto a campus, was not encountered, and he got to accomplish his goal of killing people. And it is my biggest wish that he cannot complete his second goal of avoiding death penalty. Now, once the jury selected, this trial could go on through September. They are going to have tons of testimony and video and such to listen to before they come to a decision. And remember, that decision has to be unanimous if they are going to recommend death. Things should be getting better. COVID-19 rates are low. Companies are open for business and there are plenty of jobs to go around. But as CBS 12's Lena Salzbank is discovering, thanks to skyrocketing prices, too many families are still struggling to put food on the table. During the pandemic, with so many people out of work, many of our local food banks were working overtime to help put meals on the table for families that were in need. Right now, there are still plenty of families that need a helping hand, but right now it's for different reasons. I feel like we're headed into another crisis. So we came out of COVID. Of course, we are very busy during that time, um, but it just really hasn't stopped. And now we are hearing from individuals and seniors that are really having a tough time making a go of it financially right now. Food banks are seeing another surge in customers thanks to rising rents and spiking food and gas prices. It's been over probably the past six weeks that we have really heard a lot from individuals that they are really having a tough time. Jamie Kendall, the CEO of Palm Beach County Food Bank, tells CBS 12 News seniors are getting hit especially hard. I received a letter from somebody that used to be a financial donor to the food bank. Explained that she was an 85 year old whose rent had just increased by 50 percent and she herself well, used to be able to make financial donations, modest financial donations to us. Couldn't do that anymore because she didn't know if she was going to be able to buy food for herself. Altogether, the Lake Worth Food Bank gives out more than a million and a half pounds of food a month, enough to feed 100,000 people, but they could use even more. Rice, uh, canned vegetables, canned soup, canned protein products, peanut butter. They do their best to keep up with the growing need, but their costs are rising too, and many of the federal programs they counted on have expired. We're not getting as much food for the same dollar amount that we were getting this time last year. Jamie says that in Palm Beach County alone, more than 180,000 people are at risk of becoming food insecure. Now, current economic projections say that prices aren't likely to come down anytime soon.